Up From Work podcast. My name is Dave Swillow. Let's get ready to hustle. Thank you guys for joining. All right. So uh, thank you people who are hanging out with us on Instagram live. We're kind of doing something new tonight. I've got our tech set up a little bit different. So we're kind of fumbling through a little bit. Uh, Also, Ryan and I usually hang out together, but we're going remote tonight because of the current state of the, uh, the world. So Welcome back to the Waking Up From Work podcast tonight. You're listening to the 50th episode of the podcast. So yeah. first of all, yeah, shout out to, <laughs> yeah, uh, shout out any- to episodes. <laughs> dude, thank you to everyone who has listened from the very beginning. Thank you for everyone who's come on board since then. Uh, we wouldn't be at 50 episodes in with 3000 downloads without people that gave a shit or found value in what we were doing. So thank you guys for for giving us something to do on our Thursday nights, a place to vent, a place to meet people, and a place to grow at. This has been a blast, and I uh, am not feeling the pod burn yet, so I'm going to be keeping on. So mm-hmm. welcome, uh, Rye Guy. I can't see you right now, but I think that you have a strategic uh, mic yep. location. Yeah, right. uh, it's mainly just me taking my phone and putting it directly uh, <laughs> up to my face. Hi, hello, how are you? Here's oh, my- oh, look at that! Look at that muff, dude! Look at that beautiful beard! Yeah, yeah, look at that! You can friggin' you can dust the table with this thing. So, dude. So, first of all, people on Instagram Live, I would love like if anyone has stories on what we're talking to tonight. Actually, tonight would be a great time to hear more stories because tonight we were gonna do like a 50th episode like rah rah you know looking back at kind of like ryan and i's uh journey so far you know where have ryan and i come from from the beginning where are you know what are some of our favorite episodes some of the most impactful to us personally we're still going to do that I think honestly, Rye, I think that we should crack like a bottle of champagne and and like dress up in suits or something. Just do the most ridiculous bullshit. I'll do that. We're going to table that for tonight because obviously the world is really fluid right now and changing every day with what's going on with uh, this pandemic and everything. Uh, I'm not going to sit there and be the newsroom right now. I don't want to talk anything about any any science or or or, or things like that. I'm not going to get into that, but it is it is really really affecting obviously the economy, which in turn is really affecting creatives right now. And if you haven't listened to the podcast before, we're all about living that full time creative life, living a life doing what you want to do, and that's what we do. Is we talk to creatives, we talk to entrepreneurs, we're talking to people and, and friends and people are, are, are being affected that we are are really invested in. And I wanted to take a moment in the craziness to talk about some stuff that is just right now happening. And and before we even get into it, Rye, like I just want to say to everyone out there that first and foremost, before we say anything, we fully understand the magnitude, the severity, and the legitimacy of the health, the life or death situation. Like we understand yep. everything like that. So when we're talking about economy or we're talking about like, you know, living your creative life, we understand it's on top of all that. We understand that there's an over looming piece of importance that we're not talking about maybe during this episode, but just know that we're not downplaying that in any way, just so that that way, you know, that this is just a focus on this one piece of the puzzle but know yeah. that that's on our mind still thoughts and prayers to everyone out there doing their thing and, and, and dealing with any, any piece of it. So just know that guys, uh, don't come in and hate on me. Um, you can, if you want, that's super cool, but, um, super cool. Don't hate on my friend or I'll have a problem with you. 
If you talk shit about my friend, um, like I know I have your IP address because you're talking to me on Instagram, right? So, dude, yeah, like not tonight, IP, not that smart. <laughs> there's there there are are good friends of mine. You know, people maybe even on this Instagram feed right here that are creatives, freelancers, entrepreneurs. That there there are literally people that have gone from 100 to zero in days amazing shocks and ripples to the system happening to people everywhere creatives everywhere yeah i want to talk about you know some stories that i've heard from people tonight and and get those stories out there that have been positive also want to you know talk through some of the the day to day that people might have been you know hit with that ripple or that earthquake and and may not have bounced back or may not be in you know be in that way that they can come up with something that's really what i wanted to get into tonight rye hell yeah man so do you like like what what have you been seeing from your side and then i'll, I'll i definitely have some stories from some friends that i want to share uh, from my side i suppose i see i mean i guess in the voice and and whatnot but people are still in need of like work. Like it's strange, like how much that this entire thing has put people in the perspective of like, just how possible is it to do my job, whether it's your day job or your creative job right. to a point where you can do it on your own or how remotely or how like, with the social structure going, how it is now people have to be, you know, restricting, you know, social contact almost like entirely, like what is it that you can do with the circumstance and, you know, companies that are still running remotely, people still need ads. Um, people still need stuff like that. That's going on the internet that doesn't, uh, really get affected by person to person contact too much. Right. And even though like the demand might not a hundred percent be there, like there are companies that are still working. So, I, I guess there is ways around it. Uh, what's kind of funny, I guess, for my specific situation, though, is um, that my job is, my day job is able to be done 100%, at least in this point in time. So, like, I'm kind of getting the opposite end of where I think everyone else is at, where the day job is kind of like coming to a halt for a lot of people. And then that, sure. that area is slowing down. But on the other hand, I'm in like a new living situation where there is no like feasible setup for me yet to be like uh, doing any spots or be doing anything. Like I don't even have a place to put my personal like computer, let alone set up my entire voice stuff. So it's kind of it's kind of strange, like still having the day to day and then not having that kind of, that creative thing on top of that. So I guess what my perspective would be, um, like going on this and the things that I've been doing are kind of some of the back end stuff that we have talked about and touched on on specific episodes where we're not necessarily talking about the creative process as the whole, but more or less the good habits and structures uh, and behaviors and like things that you're going about in your day to day to stay organized and to stay on track and to stay healthy so that yep. when it does come to your creative stuff, like you're on there. So for instance, I'm changing up the way that I have to work out and the way that I structure my day and uh the way that you know you go to the grocery store and like like i can't go to the gym and exercise like i have to find ways to exercise in the house and right. i have to find ways to you know eat on a bit better of a on a bit better of a schedule because i can't just go and buy fresh produce every night or i can't go and like go to right. mcdonald's or whatever um it really is just about changing up how things have been going and like transitioning into what appears to be going to be like a long a long thing. So, um, yeah, I actually re would really be interested in hearing what you have to say and what some other people have to say because I, kind of on my end, like I, uh, I don't have too much to do in terms of work. I just have back end stuff to do. So I would like to see what everybody else is kind of up to in terms of work. Right. And I think there's a couple elements that you just put out there. And, and first, first one being is that I think that it's doing one, you know, one way or the other. It is either stimulating creativity for people because they may have time that freed up. You know, maybe their day job 
is still active, but by working from home, they just don't have the commutes. They have more hours put into to playing or maybe they're working from home. They, they aren't active at that work and they are able to put more hours into to their creative. But then on the flip side, like for you, you have a different living situation than normal. You mm-hmm. know, things like things like food or workout are disrupting your daily patterns. And mm-hmm. it's, it's uh, something that's being harder on allowing you to be creative. And, and so there's a couple, you know, I'm looking at a couple things where there's obviously this element because of how large scale it is and how, you know, public panic and, and, and for good reason, right. You know, preparedness. Yeah. There's like a Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Like we talk about it just in life anyway. Like you can't be the best person you are in your business or the best person you are in a million things that you do if you're not whole. So like if you have problems in the mental, in the physical, like you're not working out ever or you're not eating ra- well ever or you're not or you don't have well, like a house or, or you, you don't have shelter or you yeah. don't. Yeah, it's really hard to to make things happen when you don't have the things that you need. I think that that's happening in micros right now where like people are like, I need to get enough food for this amount of time. I need to get enough cleaning supplies for this amount of time. I need to get, you know, this thing, you know, secured, mm-hmm. or I need to do this. There's a lot of like, make sure that I don't stuff. get sick here and that this is the sanitized and yeah. that I'm not around this person. And did I talk to that person to make sure that they're okay? And yeah, yeah, family. Yep. Location communication. There's a lot of things that are like, I can't do anything. I can't do my job and I can't do my creative. I can't do anything until these things are sorted out. So there's a <laughs> lot of that, that that's happening. I think if you can get into a spot where you're like, all right, I've got the things that I need for the amount of time that I feel that I need them based on the communication that I'm getting from all sorts of, you know, wherever I'm getting that information from it at this time, I feel yeah. that I am able to function back into life, right? Whether that's doing your day job or that's doing your creative, or if you have a business full time and things just changed on you, focusing on getting any income or changing income streams or whatever, then mm-hmm. I think that comes into play. Mm-hmm. And I think it, it kind of depends on the situation you're in. You know, there are friends of mine who work in live sound that have literally had every event that is their only income canceled for the entire year, right? In days, in literally yeah. days. And even if they got a scent that that was coming, it didn't feel like it, what it was until the days changed day by day to literally alter what happened and immediately yeah. do that. Those people, like once again, they probably had to go through their, like their hierarchy, right? Like, how do I get safe? How do I get blah, 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 blah then they are focused on the other piece of that hierarchy, which is how do I get income to make it so that I can keep providing these things for me in the next coming weeks or days or months. Right. right. And like what's going to happen to my future needs. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it, it obviously differs in every situation. One story I want to share right now, because it's, it's so uh, inspirational to me from seeing like an entrepreneur really, you know, get smacked in the face, pivot hard, and then just figure out another way to move. That was, was a, a good kind of moment for me to take in and, and, and peace to take in to see how someone can really capably pivot. So this is a guest that eventually will be on the show. He said that he's going to come on, but he was, he's been in the middle of a lot of things even before this time that made it so it's going to be a spring interview, but person in the community that's doing a lot for New Hampshire for creative right now, Tim Messina has started a events company out there called events United that puts on amazing shows. Their, their lights, their audio, they've been doing soul fest for the longest time. So they've just been a, a big player in the, the scene here in live sound and in audio. He also has a creative space in Derry, New Hampshire called studio lab. And so he's going to come on in, on the show in a couple months and, and talk, hopefully. But recently, you know, he, he has a company. He has people that work for him. He has these, you know, facilities. He's got large amounts of, of things going on. And to have all of a sudden every event cancel like that is like, shit, I need to figure stuff out right now. I need to find out how I'm going to keep people employed, how I'm going to, you know, 
bring in income for my family, how I'm going to do this. So he goes from having an industry that is like arguably one of the most affected industries out there right now, entertainment, hospitality, you know, there's obviously a million that are affected in it, but, but some of those just really between like the direct people, person to person, people not so having money <laughs> and the direct person to person stopping amount of people to be able to congregate, to do any of the industry have flattened yeah. these industries. Yep. He, the other day was like, all right, what can I do? Right. And this is going to be the big point that I take in through this episode is we don't have control necessarily on how the government reacts to things. We certainly don't have control on a virus or sicknesses and things like that, except for the things that we are doing to try to (laughs) mitigate them, flatten the curve, like all these things that we're trying to do right now to be more effective. That is control that we have, but we don't have the control to just eliminate this at the moment, right? We don't have the control of what other people do for the most part to handle their own shit, or maybe they are sick and they're treating something badly. There's a lot of things that we can't control right now. We can't Uh control necessarily the economy. We can't necessarily control. There's a lot of things that we lost control on, or we maybe thought we had control and it was just shown to us how little control we really have. We can't dwell on those things. And it's easy for me to say where like I am income wise going to be okay right now. Maybe I wouldn't react as well. I'm not like doing amazing. Like this is affecting me as well, but like I am going to survive. So, I mean, (laughs) I I can only speak from the standpoint that I have. I can't speak as someone who just lost all income for a year. Yeah. But I think that it's really important right now to, you know, have your moment, Uh have your beer night, have your week, you know, whatever you need to get over the things that you can't control that just absolutely are devastating. And then yeah. right now we don't have the time to dwell on the non-controllables. We can only go after the things that we can control. And if you're losing because of the things you can't control, pivoting to something that you can make do, you know, something different to, to think differently, to not try to just be like, well, I need to throw events to, to take income. What Tim did is he said, okay, we're a live sound company. So I'm going to take all my live sound, all my lighting and everything. I'm going to set up in my creative space because I have this other space as a tool. And I'm seeing all these artists doing things because they have to keep income coming, right? So all these artists are now shifting what they are doing. They're doing live concerts from home. They're doing live concerts in general because they need to create income too. So now a new opportunity has been given from these non-controllables. Mm-hmm. So then, like the, like the new, the like the new market in the this point in time, and completely how different market. You know, yeah. like that happened before, but people wouldn't actually tune in because they could just go to a real concert in person. So they just the market didn't exist the way that it did for monetization until this moment. And now maybe it will move, maybe it will moving forward, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. So Tim threw, Tim had, had, had been having the, the dropkick Murphys do some tour prep in his facility because obviously they are local to new England for a lot of points in the year, like Boston's huge for St. Patty's day. So they've been doing some tour prep in the larger bays that he had there. I'm sure that, that, that relationship facilitated into this where he just threw their live St. Patrick's Day stream concert, which became the number one live streamed concert in human history. Out of out of figuring a way to literally take lemons and make them into lemonade. Like he had these things that were generating revenue of some sort, literally took them and then made them make another revenue based off of a market that just formed from the circumstances. And I don't know if that necessarily solves his problem, dude, but like he was effectively able to pivot in that time with what he had still doing what he loves to do in a different way. And that was super motivational for me to, to change quickly. Yeah. How's like, how's like, uh, would you be able to be doing like mixing for people was hundred percent remote or is there stuff yeah. that you have like just have to be in? Okay, so that's good. At least like, that and you I'm can starting to. Give- like if yeah. they're, uh, 
you know, if they're recording at their own, I mean, yeah, if they're recording at their own area, like, or if they're even, and this is the thing too, is that like, you think of the shutdown in this time and it's like, there are some people who like don't have an area to have their band record at, at their home yep. house and they have to like go places and how much that stymies all that stuff. And so it's just like, Oh yeah. Even though I'm an audio engineer who is able to do stuff a hundred percent remote. Oh yeah. I can't, some of the, like not all of these musicians are going to be able to. And so it's even dealing with like, it, it really is what he was saying. It's like, it's a brand new market and you almost yes. have to approach the same way that you were doing your old job, but like in the new market mindset. Well, and, like, it's, and, and it maybe like you said too, like maybe this is the time where it shows you that people are willing to see a concert right. over live stream instead of going to, to see one. So maybe when things do regulate back a little bit towards the normal lifestyle, once we move through this this situation, I'm like, oh, maybe that we can reconsider what it is in terms of value and what's there. But yeah, right. it's crazy how like this temporary, this temporary market kind of type deal is being so affected by our inability to be socially connected to each other. I think that I think that a lot of things like people have been mixing remote like in this community that i'm a part of i i don't this actually exposed a weakness for me i need to do probably more remote work and i started to because of this people have been mixing remote for a while more are right now but i like i truly believe that we have a lot of tools to be able to like for your day job and for my day job Mm. being able to work from home Mm -hmm. i can do everything at my day job right now from home but the company doesn't doesn't like that or whatever like you you can too and mm-hmm. i probably perform better that way in a, in a million other instances like this live concerts or like remote mixing and things like that i think that we as a civilization have a lot of tools to be able to do these things online and this just forced a daylight on a lot of things that we probably could do yep. as a society moving forward 2020 on to actually integrate these things in like a more fluid way. Like this may change a lot of the way that many things in our society function after this, at this point in a good, in a possibly good way. I don't know. I a hundred percent agreed dude, because you're right. Like it was because so being so circumstantial that like we are forced into this and it's almost like, well, Hey, now you have to, be put into the position where you have to see what the capacity of efficiency and whatnot that we're doing is what's with the circumstance that we have here. And you almost get, I think after the time period ends, and I think we're going to get plenty enough time to get the data into where it'll be, you know, just how well um, does your hypothesis, like let's use you for example, how well does your hypothesis of we need you to be in the office for this job to work effectively, like, does that hold water now like here's the uh here's the evidence we just had let's say this thing goes on for a while we just had three months of people almost being 100 percent remote and you know besides the drop in and everything when people couldn't be you know like what we said with our needs people can't be engaging in normal practice like once that goes off it's just like yeah it turns out that people really do work extremely well from home or you know my style of personality and my style of sales allows me to use online as an efficient tool and it turns out that it is boosting company productivity and it's it is in boosting employee morale and uh you know employees being able to take care of their personal life or be given the freedom to like work the way that they want and that is a positive thing right and companies might hopefully and creatives too like you know, it goes to show you when you get put into a a position where you have to do or act a certain way, like you develop new strategies and sometimes those new strategies uh, carry over after the circumstance kind of goes away. Hopefully, at least with yours, where it sounds like you do so well that it's like, yeah, hey, why can't this just be a normal thing? Like, why so resistant to something that's, you know, albeit not what we normally do, but it seems to be a good thing. Why, what's the problem with testing the waters? Right. You can't reject something just because it's not the way that you've been doing it. If it's yeah. showing results, then 
it has results. I mean, like what I like, I'm, I'm super bottom line type of guy. And it's like, if you, what you're doing is bearing better or good results and it's yielding other benefits that are, are surpassing another way of doing it. It doesn't really matter that you've always done it some way. It doesn't matter Mm -hmm. it doesn't, there's nothing that there's no, I don't hold value in something that you've just done many times in your life because you've done it that many times. I hold value in results in the way that people are benefiting. That's all I really care about. Exactly, man. You know? And I think like, for me, it's exposed like because it's exposed that I don't have a lot of systems for doing things online. I yeah. since that point have gotten a software that allows uh, people to upload files direct to me, and they it's easier for them to do that. They just take all their audio files they need me to mix and put it up to a site that's local for me to download on. And then, uh, like, there's an artist of friend of mine that that uh, was supposed to be working at a studio at a college. And then obviously the college shut down. So I, I did a phone call with him the other day. And I think we might end up doing like, um, you know, some Skype or Zoom to go over. He's going to end up recording it himself because mm-hmm. he does have access to some really high-end microphones and preamps down there. We're going to talk through, you know, what type of gain to bring it in and some of the tech specs to make it so we definitely get a good recording from him. And then all those files are going to be uploaded to that site for me. I'm going to mix it, spit it back to him. He'll put it up and that will go out to Spotify without, you know, he's down in North Carolina or Virginia, I think. And mm-hmm. that's something that I've never incorporated into my business. Now, this forced me to 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 have a way to facilitate that. So this has been a, a positive aspect from my side for that piece. You know, yeah. there's a lot of negatives, obviously, for business, like people just have less money in their pocket, you know, but I think that's something that we can kind of all benefit from, too, where, you know, as much as this sucks and is severe and it is severe, like, I really think that people need to keep a fresh perspective on this, that, you know, this isn't the bubonic plague that's going to wipe out 75% of the human population, but like, it's nothing to to joke about and it's nothing to continue on, like, oh, you know, people are just trying to quarantine so they don't get sick, but it's really not too big of a deal. Like, it's yeah. kind of, it's a, it's a pretty big deal. So like, it's you do have to change, deal. you have to change up the way that you're doing things. But when you keep that in perspective too, um, like it, it allows you to be healthy about it and allows you to make new decisions that allow you to do new things and to make the best of the situation that it is. And like you said, like you do get forced to develop new strategies and right. you do end up becoming better because of it. And those strategies can possibly be incorporated when you go back to what you consider to be the old norm. Right. So I'm yeah, glad that, yeah. that's something that can, that everybody can at least pull out of being in here in this time. And, and for people that like, like for your situation where you're like, you're like, I, I have actually more time to be creative, but my space and my circumstance makes it so I just don't have the equipment that I need or whatever I need to be able to facilitate that. The accessibility is non-existent. What I would say for you, man, and for anyone in that situation where you're like, oh, now I have more time, but I don't have the ability because of circumstance, is that's also a great time to focus on the business thing, like working on your business instead of for your business there is mm-hmm. never enough time for that. Like I, like I've started scheduling. I think like Monday or Tuesday night, I have those open to to be able to work on my business instead of for it. So that what that means is I'm not mixing those nights. I mm-hmm. am working on creating, you know, creating the software that I can get uploaded files remotely, or I'm I'm working on website content or or a way to to have people's intake be cleaner. Or I'm working on, you know, finding more audio clients or creating, you know, a, a, a marketing thing, or I'm doing something to work on it. You know, like for uh-huh. you, you can, you could, you could literally build your website in this downtime. You literally could yeah. build your whole website, come back out of this when people are booming yep. more and then come out with some of these things that you don't have time for when you're, when you're growing like a sole proprietorship or something where it's a one-to-one ratio where you're literally like, you're asking me to do the thing and I do the thing for money. Yep. It's a great problem to have when you start building that demand and you are just now really busy. Like being yep. busy is a good thing. 
but it's really bad if you're so busy that you never have the the opportunity to work on any of those those aspects. So if if you finally have time to friggin' figure out your, you know, your accounting or your bookwork or taxes, mm-hmm. you finally have enough time to build that website or you finally have enough time to create a list of like target clients or like something that you don't have time for when you're just facilitating these things that may have slowed down, now is a great opportunity to have forced time and mm-hmm. get some of these things out of your way so you can just rip up the back half of the year. Yeah, back end stuff. That's definitely like where my head has been at. Like it's nice when you have uh like uh, it's crazy how much you take it for granted like stuff like commute time. Like I have t- so much more time in the morning. Like I get more sleep so when I wake up in the morning I'm more fresh. Oh my god. And like, yes. And now I'm like writing stuff down in the morning, like stuff that I'm thinking about or stuff that I know that I need to get done. And I have time for stuff like laundry and just like things that would take up my time on other things like I'm I'm allocating time towards and it, it's making the uh like the change of environment and the change of habit is like creating it's like creating a new structure like in the time of when our regular structure has been disrupted right and like organizing thoughts like yeah oh hey this is who I'm going to what I'm going to do for the website oh this is this is something that I can do once I have the PC and whatnot back up and running. Like these are the things that I'll be able to engage with. These are the people who I'm going to need to engage with once I can get back into the swing of things. Like, and you're right. Yeah. It's like, Oh wow, man. I I really didn't realize how much even just spending an hour just in the, the car a day, like ends up, you know, being a big deal. Right. And that's why like, honestly, I'm dude, I'm so, I, I spend so much time in the car right now. Mm-hmm. I'm also like such a bad distracted person because I'm trying to be productive in it mm-hmm. that I'm like constantly like I, I'm honestly pretty safe, but like I, I do like voice <laughs> memos, dude. And I will, I will do like, if I need to make like video, if I want to make like a video content or like right now I'm working on like a, a short video series of like how to start a podcast, you know, mm-hmm. for, for, because people have been asking me on it or I'll, I will do a voice memo and I'll be sitting driving like three hours through Maine talking to myself like viciously to this voice memo. You know what I mean? So, but, but I, you know, or like uh, I'll listen to our show as a demo reel of it. Like I just spit this out and then I will, I will note, you know, times I need to edit or like, you know, some of the things we put in our show notes, like quotes or like things inside the podcast or shit. I'm trying to be productive because I have such a commute and I have so much wasted time that I'm trying to find ways to be productive when you work from home home and you do things from home. Yeah. Oh, no shit, dude. I know. I know. Meg will listen to this and get so mad, but, uh, I need a, I need a host, bro. What is a co-host without his damn host? You're going to leave me here. High and dry. Yeah. I'll be here, man. I've got it. You got it. Anyway, dude, you're fine. I've got a system. I, I'm, I'm. It's all pretty much recorded stuff. It's really just like a voice memo, really. But I've got two phones. I've got a work phone and a personal, and one's doing like a uh, like usually playing the content from my stereo. So if I'm playing the episode that I'm editing, mm-hmm. or I'm listening to the song that I've I need to do mix notes on or something, mm-hmm. then I will literally have the other phone recording voice memo mm-hmm. and and shout these things. Be like, <laughs> vocals <laughs> up at twenty one seconds. <laughs> you know edit uh stupid um 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 out of podcast minute and 34 <laughs> seconds you know so uh but that's been like all dead time that i had to find a way to pr- be productive long short of it is that now it's you're therapy. right you can you can run some laundry while you're emailing a customer or yep. you can you know there's different ways but yeah dude. Good, dude. it's just like yeah oh nice i'm doing coffee i'm gonna go I'm going to go right down a little bit that I had. Like, that's what another thing that's been happening too is that like, yeah, I have so much time in my head that I just have like real little random bits coming to my head, stuff that I think is funny or things that I think would be cool to talk about. Like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, just because uh, the normal thing that we were going to do for the podcast before, um, you know, because everything's been increasing in severity by like a lot each day. Oh, yeah. Dave's like Dave said, like our plan was to be, you know, oh, we were going to c- kind of do like a, uh, you know, 
a review of where we've been at so far for the 50th episode. And so it's like, oh man, I'm going up and I'm getting some coffee and I would find myself writing stuff like that down. Like what's, what's been fun? What have I been thankful for? What have I been, what have I really learned from this? Like what's been some of my, my memories from it? And it's like, it is, it goes to show you just how, like if you can change your environment and make the environment like really conducive to you too, like how much comes out of it in little spurts, you know, I think people have a kind of this convolution that like everything will come in like big strides, but I've I've honestly found that it's like the little things that you do um, all the time that like add up and like that kind of keep you moving forward and are like the actual glue that hold those big things together. Right. Right on dude. Well, so like let, let's cut it a little bit because we just talked about like how, how businesses are, are, are adapting different or, you know, creative times versus business times. Do you want to just talk about like, you know, this is something that we, we've talked before with people that, People that work a, a day job of some sort and side hustle, they might not be used to having all of a sudden an open schedule. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's, it's, it's different. Hard, like, remember I was telling you, right? When I was out of work for a couple months, mm-hmm. right? There it's were days bored. where I literally put on like a, sh- a shirt and tie because mm-hmm. I was like, I need to feel like I'm doing something important right now. So I mm-hmm. stopped fucking around you mm-hmm. know what i mean so i stop waking up you know late an hour an hour an hour an hour like getting up later and later each day you know mm-hmm. taking things less seriously i was like i need i need it doesn't matter that i don't have a schedule i need to get stuff done so i do need yep. to have a schedule and i do need yep. to it's just a different it's a different thing if you haven't been living that way what are some things that you've been seeing in all of a sudden your schedule opens up how are you staying doing the things that you want to do? You know, what things are you, are you doing to combat some of the, the negatives of that type of, you know, open schedule and, and freedom? Right. Cause it is super easy to kind of just like fall into the lull of like, Oh, well I have time to do everything so that you end up not doing anything. Exactly. And exactly. The, to be dead honest, like what you had just said about putting the shirt and tie on, I think, I have found myself, you know, I have, a, I hear a lot of people be like, oh, I'm excited to work in my pajamas all day and this and that. I'm like, yeah, I'm all about being comfy and whatnot. But like, I wake up in the morning, I still shower, I do my morning routine, mm-hmm. you know, I get everything done. I try to make a, a good breakfast and, you know, write down what I want to get done for the day in nice. terms of how things are going to go. Even if it's writing down, you know, what is it that I'm going to get done for my work day? My work days are kind of much lower now. But, you know, you still want to, Keep, you, you still want to keep that habit going. Like you want to act like business as usual as much as can be business as usual. Right. Well, not being like ignorant to the fact that things are changing around you. Absolutely. So honestly, like I, yeah, I put up, I put a pair of jeans on or, you know, I put a, I change, you know, I changed into like clothes that I would actually like wear to business casual work because I'm still working. And it makes, like you said, it makes me feel like I'm doing something with my day. Um, like just finding f- little ways to be productive, like keeping your area clean yep. and, and, and conducive to your stuff. Like I, I just, I think of my, uh, I think of Sarah right now who's, you know, she works with kids in home. She's a behavior therapist. And now that obviously, you know, you cannot be in people's homes and having human contact. She is, you know, they're pivoting and adapting by doing Skype sessions with homes and, and with uh, families that, you yep. know, and get That's hooked crazy, up to a dude. computer, and That's they're crazy. Doing like, yeah, they're literally doing like behavior therapy over webcams. And so she was, she was showing me how she had to literally like rearrange the entire room so that she had like <laughs> her office desk and her computer in a place where she could like stand up and still be like and look legit doing stuff. And it just goes to show you, dude. Like, yeah, okay. Like, she's got a nice little conducive area, and it's not at, at all what is entirely used to but it's gonna it's gonna hopefully work and it's gonna be at least tried and whatnot and you know she she was telling me that she was finding a little success with it and it was definitely hard and some people can't even meet them like they can't they don't have the computer capability or they don't have the audio capability right 
and, but like it's there and it's the attempt and it's the thing that's been working. So yeah, definitely stuff like that. But also just like trying so hard to not be lazy, like continuing to be exercising, continuing to be going outside and walking around and things are, it's so crazy. Like things really are coming to such a standstill. And I'll say too, like as much as you want to work against it and you're like, Oh, got to get stuff done. got to still be productive. Like I really encourage people to draw attention to the fact that this is forcing you to be slightly less active and to be slightly more chill and to be sitting with yourself more and to be sitting with the people whom you share an environment with more. And it right. gives you like a cool opportunity to realign yourself to not getting a lot of stuff done too. And all of the, the beauty that comes with that and all of the peace that comes with that. So like, I would say find that, that, that healthy balance between efficient and productive uptime and whether it's your day job or your creative thing and to like really maximize like your downtime, whether it's just, you know, the other day I caught myself being able to just like sprawl out on the carpeted floor and just like breathe those heavy breaths and just be relaxed and to just be okay with literally like having nothing happen right. and not having any responsibility at that point in time or not having to like be uh, caught up with anything that I needed to think about or figure out or have a plan for. It was just that nice, oh man, dude, like I haven't been giving myself enough downtime. So like, yeah, be, be, be thankful and embracing of that, of that da- downtime in your position. Like another thing that I had thought about too, is that, you know, I had been trying to, you know, think about getting a new job or changing jobs. And there had been a couple of times where I had, I had had the position to, to do so, but I was like, oh, you know, being able to work remote is a really, is a boon for me. And something that's something as, uh, as trivial as, you know, not making as much money as I would if I went to another place. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, well maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's a blessing. Maybe that's a curse. Who knows? And it just goes to show you that like good decisions and preparedness, like I'm, I'm thank like I'm so thankful right now that that I am able to still like put 40 hours in a week and get a pay like a regular paycheck and even Same. though my job has significantly changed in process and and outcome and whatnot uh, that I'm still able to do that because I know people who aren't you know everything about their life is shut down right now I know and it's just like wow man something that looked like you know something that I was bummed about two months ago is looking like a really good decision right now. And so having right. the, this downtime to, you know, reacclimate, re, re, get your perspective straight, you know, see where you're at, take inventory about how things are going. How's your family doing? How are you doing, you know, physically, emotionally, in terms of your creative thing, in terms of your life goals? Like, this is another good time to, like you said, there's a lot of back end stuff that can be done. And, you know, you can think about in a very, business pragmatic way or you can think of that in a little bit more of uh, Mm. a personal way kind of like what we were talking it's like yeah how are how are you doing as a person how are you doing in terms of in relations to your goals how are you doing interpersonally how are you doing health wise yeah Uh, this is that that this could possibly be that time for a lot of people it is for me at least yeah it's um you know it's definitely like a hyper uh present it's it's driving presence because yeah. you have a lot of time that may be quiet, like like in my house, I, I live like and Meg's back from school early, so like there's legit five people living in my house. It's a, it's a full house, mm-hmm. but there's definitely more times where it's dead quiet for a long time. There's mm-hmm. more times where you know the thing that we do for, like you were saying, for exercise, I'm running. I'm still training as if my marathon's not going to get canceled in May. I'm still training for it. So I'm running a lot, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, I'm doing a lot of core work and things like that just out in the yard and, uh, in, in a lot of nature things where like, it is a very safe place to be, uh, you know, hiking or, or going for runs out in, in the woods even, but mm-hmm. you know, it's forcing me to be present even though i'm still trying to capitalize on any downtime that i have and be productive with audio and push things out Mm. it's still making it so that even even though i'm being productive even though i i feel like i am putting in full days right now 
it's just like the the there's just less action like i can't go to a bar i can't go out to a show i can't go out to eat like there's less like action it's all like there's less all... available stimulus and distraction like exactly you can't with as many things as you were before so it's yeah. forcing you to be in a different it's forcing spot you, forcing your... presence like all the time and, yeah. and I'm, I'm honestly i mean like that's pretty Refreshing. awesome it's pretty like it's definitely a good thing for me sometimes so i'm glad you to know. hear man. that's kind of where i've been too and so that's why I, why I think it's important not to like, not to catastrophize and act like it's the end of the world, but to also not act like, you know, like people aren't like, dying. It's a, it's a vacation. Yeah, dude, people are dying. People are, <laughs> are, are dying. So it's not a joke, yeah. you know, but, but at the same time, there are things that we can and cannot tro- control yep. and things that we can't think- control. We, we can't dwell on them. We need to do the best that we can mm-hmm. to find growth and find, good things about, uh, uh, out of any situation I think for sure man I agree 100% gotta make the best with what we have at the moment right on man I, I have like nothing else to say dude like this conversation was like perfect for me yeah me too man like it's it, it's one of those things where it's just the candid reaction to the moment and you know what it is and is that you can't do and everything else after that is just gravy and I think going back to what you said when we were prefacing with this, where, you know, we talk about all this stuff where it's just like, yeah, you know, if you have the the circumstance where, you know, you get to still do your creative thing on top and that's the thing that can happen, then we're very happy. But if you're in a circumstance kind of like where, where I'm at, where it's just like, yeah, it's just all about, it's all about living right now. It's all about just like your day to day. Then, you know, that's where you have to be at too. And, everybody's circumstance and whatnot is going to be different it needs to be evaluated as such. And I think the thing that we're just trying to give to everybody and that should be a takeaway is that, is that whatever your circumstance is like doing, doing the best within that circumstance to, you know, facilitate yourself forward is, is what you have to do at the moment. Right. And try, trying times, you know, uh, trying times, you know, make people stronger. So this is just like a little piece of adversity that we're all facing in a very stupidly real way. And uh, it's almost like the, what's nice about it is that it's not like adversity that, you know, we would be dealing with in our every single day lives. Like this is very much like an unbiased, like nonpartisan yeah. uh, thing where it's just like, yes, yeah, sicknesses have no biases, dude. They don't care what country you're from or what your occupation is or what your, what your schedule is or what you're up to next week. Like, it's, it's like how, a it's like how a war unifies a nation only there's not like a hatred towards another thing it's literally just a unified right. front of like bet of trying to figure out whatever humanity has to figure out indeed dude it's like the ultimate it's like the ultimate thing that's kind of forcing the hand so yeah that's crazy uh, that's crazy just, yeah so i would just say like yeah keep doing what it is that you can keep doing safe safe practices and keep keep being informed a lot of misinformation out there right now. A lot of people who don't know what they're talking about conflating a lot of stuff and spreading misinformation around, you know, stay informed, stay healthy, stay positive and, you know, just stay hardworking and be doing what you can too. So that's all I'm really trying to do and hope that's what everybody else can, can do too. Right on. Yeah. So guys, we would love to hear more stories from you. Like I've already yeah. talked to a lot of friends in, in different fields and, and how they're being affected. But uh, if you have a story that you want to share about how you've been dealing with your creative or whatever or it is, or life, whatever it is that you may be facing and you want to share that with us, we would love to chat on it. You know, if you want to hit us up, hit us up at Dave wake up on Instagram, Twitter, or you could on TikTok, but that's not really chatting. That's kind of like jokes. But yeah. or definitely wake up from work podcast at gmail dot com, waking up from work dot com. There's a lot of ways that we can chat with you, but we'd love to hear about what it is that you're doing to get through this. What are some of the things that you're you're facing or, or benefiting from in any way? And then we obviously from you know Ryan and I and the Waking Up from Work podcast want to wish you safety and and health to your families through the times and um you know our best wishes and luck to to all the people uh in in the listeners and and audience and, and friends and family here yeah man stay healthy everybody 
Right on. Thank you guys so much for getting us to episode 50. We are going to keep on uh, next week. Yeah. I think we're going to have a guest if it doesn't get canceled. If yeah. not, then Ryan and I will deliver some more thoughts on stuff. <laughs> we're just going to sit here and just going to come and play. Talk about how my beard's coming back, baby. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Dude, we're going to do Mad Libs. It's coming on, back. On no. podcast. That's what we'll do. We'll read fan mail. <laughs> <laughs> all, this, all that fan mail that we get mailed to us all the time. <laughs>